Rob's child, nothing I say is investment advice. Welcome to this exclusive Bitcoin analysis video. We'll explore Bitcoin's trends, potential investment strategies, and the underlying factors that compose this digital financial landscape. Drawing inspiration mostly from Lynn Eldon in the style of Benjamin Graham's security analysis, we're set for an in-depth exploration. So without further ado, let's unravel the mysteries of Bitcoin through analysis. The first biggest, most important point is that people value Bitcoin in dollars. They don't value Bitcoin in Bitcoin. People don't care how much Bitcoin they have. They care how much buying power they have. And the world hasn't changed yet to the point where people don't care about the value of the dollar anymore. The dollar still reigns supreme, and that's a very important point to understand. When people today are purchasing Bitcoin, their hope is that it will either retain the amount of dollar value that it has or increase the amount of dollar value that it has. Next main point, past performance does not predict future performance. Just because Bitcoin went from a few pennies to now $45,000 does not mean that it will necessarily continue to increase in its value in the next month, in the next year. There is no guarantee here. And so even though it's had a very good track record, it is still a highly speculative instrument. Period. Any claim that Bitcoin will continue to become worth more and more dollars over time is speculating. They're guessing. Nobody has to buy Bitcoin in the future. With all of that said, the deck is not fully stacked against Bitcoin. Its value lies primar primarily in the fact that it has provided safety and liquidity and capital appreciation now for a long time. The safety that it has is even safe against governments. You can go from any country in the world to any other country in the world and still have access to this money essentially, this currency, it would likely be near impossible for a government to take it, to regulate it, to have any control over it. And so it has real potential to continue to, at the very least, be a safe place for people's assets. Now, this is, of course, more important in countries that have currencies that are devaluing very quickly through very high inflation or hyperinflation, and this tends to happen in smaller economies especially. And so it gives them a chance to take control of their own wealth and have a a more safe place to put their money than their own currency. Of course, it all comes down to dollars. As the world reserve currency, at the end of the day, other currencies, including Bitcoin, all rely on, well, how many dollars can I get? And as stable and as safe as Bitcoin can be, there is more safety and stability in the U.S. dollar still today. Because of its ability to have such great liquidity, safety, and security even against governments, there is potential, there's great potential for the value of it to continue to improve. However, there's no guarantee on that. It's mostly based on popularity, but it gets a little bit more complicated than that. 
Lynn Alden makes the argument that Bitcoin will eventually become more and more stable in value, and I don't think that's true at all. Even gold, the price of gold can fluctuate so much over time. How can you possibly expect Bitcoin to be more stable than gold? That doesn't really make sense. Especially considering, essentially, this money is nothing more than digits in a computer. It has a chance of increasing in value into the future. However, for it to have any kind of very stable value is greatly debatable. Bitcoin largely derives its value by how much electricity it costs to produce the Bitcoin. If mining Bitcoin becomes unprofitable, companies will be forced to no longer mine Bitcoin. This is a possibility of something happening in the future. In fact, there is a company called Core Scientific that is currently restructuring because it went bankrupt because Bitcoin wasn't it didn't get expensive enough for them to continue operations enough to be able to handle their debt payments. If investing in Bitcoin miners, it might be wise to be invested in companies that are more conservatively capitalized. Namely, low debt and higher amount of equity funded capitalization. A similarity Bitcoin has to the US dollar is that nothing backs it, nothing's tied to it. The US dollar used to be backed by gold. When the US dollar became decoupled from the gold standard, it became purely a fiat currency. And Bitcoin, oddly enough, especially as more and more products and people are accepting its existence, we're likely to see a fiat type of Bitcoin currency. Borrowing Bitcoin, having Bitcoin credit, Bitcoin debt. This might, it's, it's possible in the future, but the big problem with that and the biggest danger of Bitcoin in general, if it were to become a dominant currency, is deflation. Deflation is when things become less and less expensive to the value of your money. So if you have all of your money in Bitcoin and things are getting less expensive, what it does is it tells you, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't buy this now, I'll buy it later. And then what happens is you end up in a deflationary spiral where Bitcoin becomes worth a lot and nobody wants to do anything, they, um, which is what happens in deflation. It leads to a depression. I believe it is very unlikely for that to ever happen. I believe Bitcoin will always have periods of premium and discount to currencies that we use for actually buying things. More specifically, the US dollar. Now, relating it to gold, gold historically has represented wealth of nations. Whoever has all the gold has all the wealth. This has been how civilizations have been for a very long time, and that is likely to continue. Now, again, this is something that could happen to Bitcoin. 
where countries decide that they're going to buy as much of it as they can and they have all the Bitcoin and then I guess people might try to steal it. People might try to force it when we, if we ever have a change of world order of which countries and on top, we might, we could end up in a situation like that. But if we were in a situation like that, I think it might be likely that it loses its Bitcoin loses its status as sort of the new world reserve currency. I think that would sort of automatically happen because at the end of the day, what is Bitcoin? Numbers in a computer. We've gone over the biggest pros of Bitcoin, showing that it has safety, liquidity, and security even against governments. So let's go over some of the biggest cons. One of the big cons is involving access through technology. These same countries that have major problems with their cu currencies devaluing likely will have and will continue to have problems with accessing the technology to be able to have, use, store Bitcoin in the first place. I think that that's a bigger roadblock than most people give credit. Second biggest con is the volatility. It will always be very volatile and it will always be very speculative. Number three, there's no hard assets to back it. It's not tied to gold. It's not tied to anything except for what people hope to be able to sell it for and excusing its price by how much electricity it takes to produce it. And the last biggest con for Bitcoin is its copyability. There's nothing stopping me or someone else from copying exactly what Bitcoin has done and making Bitcoin 2 or Bitcoin 3. You see today an infinite number of alternate cryptocurrencies None have held up as well as Bitcoin so far, but that's meaningless when you consider the potential possibility for alternate Bitcoins or for governments even to come up with something that is better, that works better, etc. The last point I want to bring up about Bitcoin is that it is not protection against changing world order. It's not protection against major catastrophes, and it's not protection against a doomsday scenario. The only real protection against a doomsday scenario is food and ammo, and hopefully a place to sleep. Bitcoin will not provide you with this, nor will gold, nor will dollars. And so to treat it as any kind of store of value in a doomsday scenario would be erroneous. I believe all of these points listed when taken all into account together include the fact that Bitcoin is not an investment and it is a speculation. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this analysis on Bitcoin. Rob's Child.